Hello everybody! Welcome to Stonks Music. My name's Ollie, and today we're going to be having a look at the external audio effect in this deep dive session. Let's go! Right, so here we are back in the Ableton manual. Let's see what they've got to say about it. The external audio effect. The external audio effect is a bit different than Live's other effect devices. Instead of processing audio itself, it allows you to use external hardware effects processors within a track's device chain. The Audio 2 chooser selects the outputs on your computer's audio hardware that will go to your external device, while the Audio From chooser selects the inputs that will bring the process signal back into Live. As with the track's inputs and outputs, the list of available inputs and outputs depends on the audio preferences, which can be reached via the configure option on the bottom of each chooser. Below each chooser is a peak level indicator that shows the highest audio level attained. Click on the indicators to reset them. The gain knob next to the chooser adjusts the levels going out of and back into Live. These levels should be set carefully to avoid clipping both in your external hardware and when returning the audio to your computer. The dry-wet control adjusts the balance between the process signal and dry signals, set it to 100% if using external audio effect in a return track. The invert button inverts the phase of the process signal coming back into live. Since hardware effects introduce latency that live cannot automatically detect, you can manually compensate for any delays by adjusting the hardware latency slider. The button next to this slider allows you to set your latency compensation amount in either milliseconds or samples. If your external device connects to live via a digital connection, you'll want to adjust your latency settings in samples, which ensures that the number of samples you specify will be retained even when changing the sample rate. If your external device connects to live via an analog connection, you'll want to adjust your latency settings in milliseconds, which ensures the amount of time you specify will be retained when changing the sample rate. Note that adjusting in samples gives you finer control, so even in cases where you're working with analog devices, you may want to fine-tune your latency in samples in order to achieve the lowest possible latency. In this case, be sure to switch back to milliseconds before changing your sample rate. Note, if the delay compensation option is unchecked in the options menu, the hardware latency slider is disabled. For instructions how to accurately set up compensation for your hardware, please see the driver error compensation lesson. Right, so this is quite a big one that some people will probably never use if you don't have hardware. So let's jump into Ableton and see how we can set it up. Right, so here we are back in Ableton and I've just started off with a little operator patch. Let's have a quick listen. That's just a big evolving FM synth. So there's a couple of caveats to this external audio effect. One of them being, I only have a two input, two output audio interface. Now because of that, my outputs have had to be the same ones that I use as my master channel. So in order to prevent any feedback, I've had to put in a utility on my master and turn it all the way down. Otherwise I was getting a feedback loop. So let me turn this on now. Um, I've got my audio from audio one, and then returning from audio two, in the front. So that's audio one in the back of my Motu and audio two from the front because my audio one, you can see it moving here, is my microphone. So I'm going to grab my camera and show you guys the signal chain going around. And I've just got it going into this Laney amp over here. So let me just quickly show you the cables. Here's my Motu at the bottom here. and the back, we've got this cable coming out of Output 2, can we see you? No, we can't even see you. Coming out of output 2, that's going around the back here, following along into this laney. So it's going in the front of my laney here, in the active input, and on this side, we've got direct out, and follow that one along, that's coming all the way to the front here of our um, back into our Motu. So I'm just going to be using the little EQ here on the front of the Laney. We've got a compressor, a little EQ, and that's what I'm going to be using to demonstrate the external audio effect. So now if we turn the Laney on, we should be able to hear, you'll be able to hear it in this microphone coming out of here first of all. Right? 
So, if this was a effect, a distortion, a delay, we can twiddle these knobs to attain different sounds. Let's have a little listen. So the cool thing about this is afterwards we can then input other effects. So we could put a delay after this effect. So let's have a quick listen to that. And you should have been able to hear there was no difference because what we're hearing is coming out of this middle effect there. So this delay we won't be able to hear. So what we're going to do now is I've just played a bit of MIDI, I've just put one long note in. Now we're going to record in from post mixer in operator 1. So it's going to come out from the end of this chain here and hopefully not blow our heads off. Cool. So I'm going to come back, turn the audio effect off so we destroy the uh, feedback loop, come back and turn my utility up. So what we have now should be this FM synth and we can see on there where I turned that treble knob up. So let's have a listen. And you can also hear that delay effect that's in there. So let me turn that delay off and we'll just do this again. Come over here. Move this out of the way, come to master, turn our output down, turn the effect on. So, master, turn the master down to stop the feedback. Operator one, turn the audio effect on, and let's resample. So now we can hear and see the difference. So I'm going to come back, master. Operator first, turn that off, master, you turn the utility off. So now we have this. And then you can hear this one that has the delay on. And I've just done that, it's a really quick delay to kind of get that slapback feel. So let's make it a bit more obvious. I'll turn the time off and we'll have it on like quarter notes or something over here. Let's move these two out of the way and come back to our master, turn that down. And as I said before, if you have a three, four, four, six, eight output um, audio interface, you wouldn't have to do this because the output wouldn't be the same as your master output. But I only have a two in, two out. So this is what I have to do. So come back to our operator. Let's turn this one on. Master is off. Let's come here and we are just going to record. Turn that off. I should have left the uh, delay to record a bit more. Master, no, come to the utility first. External audio effect off. Master, turn the utility off. So now we should have this. And you can also hear that the uh, metronome got caught up in there too. So one thing to be wary of that we've not been wary of here is that peaked. So let's come back to our master, turn the utility on, come back to operator, we'll turn the external audio effect on, move this this way out of the way a bit more and I can turn the count in off, right? So now it shouldn't have that stuck in there and we can leave it a bit longer for the reverb. Let's also check that there's nothing peaking down here. Now we have this without the metronome hopefully coming through. Operator, turn the audio effect off. Master, turn the utility off. So we have this. So 
if you had a whole slew of hardware and you wanted to come out and go into a distortion, then a delay, then a reverb, and then something else, and something else, and then an LFO filter, and then come back in, that's when you're going to have to start playing around with this hardware latency. Um, I'm just coming out into an amp and back in, so it's not really got too much of that latency happening. And also, because I don't have enough input outputs, I can't really utilize this effect properly. I have to resample everything I do. So if you do have a load of hardware and you are using this, you're probably going to be way more versed and know a few more tricks than I do. Um, but that is the basis of the external audio effect and how to use it. All right, everyone, thank you very much for tuning into this episode of Deep Dive. Unfortunately, it was only a shallow splash into the waters of what an external audio effect can do because I don't have a slew of hardware. I didn't have to set up any of the error compensation and stuff. And because I've only got the two in, two out, that does make it a bit more complicated to set up. But hopefully it gives you an idea of what can be achieved and what you can do. Like I say, if you have a load of hardware, you're probably going to have to set up that error compensation a bit more to actually get this working and you wouldn't have to do the resampling if you had more inputs and outputs but uh is what it is as always project files are available in the description don't forget to like comment subscribe and i will catch up with you guys next time bye